Hello everyone. Um, I am re uh re re recording this video. This is, you know a lot of you I'm sure saw my post earlier today. Um, I had done the previous two videos on my old laptop. It's a piece of crap, absolute dumpster fire. Uh, didn't realize how poorly the second video turned out. Uh, didn't really have the time to rewatch it. I just really had clicked on it. And listen to the verse 10 seconds of it to make sure the audio worked and you know it was bad but i didn't realize how and how much it was skipping and and everything it was completely unwatchable so i apologize for that i'm gonna go ahead and jump back in real quick and try to summarize everything in this video this or in that video this one is going to be a lot shorter so essentially what's going on right now um and there will be some new information here as well but the russian army has attacked uh, a series of towns in the last couple days uh five or six different towns actually i think it's five towns um but the russians are also about to in enter into a sixth one and three of those were captured in quick succession basically they they fell immediately uh so we're going to go ahead and dive right in we're going to start in the avdivka area it's already looking like, uh, hopefully, you know, the map and everything's looking a lot better. I'm going to listen to this before I post it. But uh, let's go ahead and get the layers on here so we can see uh, in the Avdivka area, the Russian army uh, advanced and captured Stepove, Las, uh, Lastochny, what I've been calling uh, Lasso, and Severne. There's actually recent information out that the Russians have now attacked into Toninke and have captured a piece of that so we're looking at another bit of land something like this um, but that's kind of preliminary we don't actually know for sure uh, what's going on there it's just you know and there's always a chance that Ukrainians are, are counter-attacking also uh, these lines are a bit different so I think there's going to be another update tomorrow where we're going to be able to see a, a little bit more of that already having some issues here it looks like that didn't even save but um you know just consider that that toninke uh, might also be under russian control by tomorrow um this is you know so far what we're seeing here is not entirely unexpected by me but the rate of the the fall of these cities kind of is i thought that the russian army was going to move away from this front and focus on other areas it appears like uh, I made a bit of a miscalculation in my prediction there. It, you know, I've been talking to some people. One, a friend of mine that has uh, friends, family, relatives that live in Russia, uh, was talking to me about the r upcoming Russian election and something I hadn't even considered. That's going to take place in March, and uh, Vladimir Putin is not under any kind of threat in that election. At least there's no real challengers. What the issue is, is uh, he's worried about a lack of support uh, in coming out. So basically, let's say if in the last election he got 70% of the vote, um, he's worried that some kind of drop in that vote will reflect poorly on him. So the Russian army is going to be pushing very aggressively over the next couple of weeks until that election happens. And to kind of summarize why there would be a drop in support for Putin, um, it has nothing to do with the war, actually. It seems like, uh, you know, support for the war or and or anger for the war hasn't really changed in Russia since, since the beginning. Um, you know, the people that don't like it still don't like it. And the people that are supporting it haven't really changed their minds. What is going to affect Putin's ratings is um, a reform that was made to pensions. And the the age of retirement was actually raised, raised to 65, up from 64. So basically now all Russian people that are 64 and would have received a monthly pension are now not going to receive that. That's actually quite a bit of money that the Russian government's going to save. I mean, think about it. It's, it's 12 months of living expenses for, you know, a couple million people. So it's quite a bit of money. So it's kind of a no-brainer if you're in some kind of budgetary, uh, if you're having some kind of budgetary problems. But uh, it's very, very unpopular everywhere where this has been attempted Um to be put into legislation or has actually gone into legislation like france for example just huge riots 
um, in in every country that's that's tried to move up retirement age. Of course, you know people people have been working their whole life to retirement, so um, you know when you tack on another year to it, uh, they tend to get pretty pissed off. And you know the average life expectancy in Russia is actually lower. Um, than what it is in a lot of Western countries, it might actually be lower than what the average retirement age is. So um, yeah, it's something that that people are upset about. So there will be some kind of noticeable drop in support for Putin this round. But I mean, there's no real challenge. Nevertheless, um, never spoil a good uh, political opportunity or opportunity for political victory. There's cracks that are starting to show in uh, the Ukrainian army right now. So the you know the Russian military is definitely going to exploit it, and it's it's you know also aligns with with political goals as well. So um, you know people say this all the time that politics and military shouldn't mix, but you know yeah, they do. So. That's just the case there. So I think that in the coming uh, weeks and coming days, especially, you know, we might see Toninke, Gorlovka, um, Birodichi also fall into Russian hands. And the Russians are going to push, um, you know, as far west of here as they can, uh, since this is clearly one of the weaker areas of the front right now. We are going to move up and talk about Bakhmut and Ivanovka. Um the Russians have entered the town of Ivanovka. They've also been attempting to attack into um, U Ukrainian trench networks over the north uh, side of town. So basically, uh, in this area right here, the Russians are looking to capture that. They haven't been successful yet. But if they are, the battle for Ivanovka could... Um, deteriorate pretty rapidly in the meantime the russians have uh, made their moves and advances capturing uh, everything to the north of town like the last last bits of fields and and farmhouses and stuff so the next step uh, from this northern direction is actually to enter into ivanovka itself of course along the roadway the russians have also entered into town and then to the south of town the russians are put, putting themselves in a position where they can attack from the south. So now, you know, basically two different directions the Russians are able to enter into Ivanovka. One they have already. Uh, from the third direction, the Russians uh, might be developing this in the next uh, the next coming days. And then if uh, if the hilltop, if this area falls under Russian control, then then the battle is is basically all but over at that point. Moving down to the southern part of the lines, we're going to talk real quick about Krasnogorovka. This is something that I didn't predict, um, but it makes total sense uh, if, if the Russians have the resources. Krasnogorovka, much like Avdivka, is pretty close to Donetsk. There's some uh, artillery within Krasnogorovka that can reach some of the outer districts of Donetsk. Uh, still, um, I mean, it's after the fall of Avdivka, quite a big reduction in... Uh, you know, not a total reduction, but a pretty big reduction in Ukraine's capability to um, to shell the city. So once Krasnogorovka falls, um, that that capability is completely gone. Um, Krasnogorovka is easily the largest uh, town left on th this southern part of the line, especially in the Donetsk area. Um, so the Russians are definitely looking to move in there. Um, this area is grayed out because we're not exactly certain what the Russians control and what the Ukrainians control. We just know that this is the area of the attack. Um, the reports state that uh, fighting was very close to the first line of houses in the southern part of town, but stopped just short of it. So uh, somewhere within this area, the Russians have established some kind of presence. Uh, this is ba where I have the lines. Basically, that's the maximum position that the Russians might hold in the area. So we'll keep an eye out on that. In terms of Nova Mik, the Russians have advanced up, uh, finishing uh, the capture of this warehouse district right here, as well as the southern boulevard running through Nova Mikhailovka. So now the Russians have entry and access to Nova Mikhailovka from, uh, you know, Two, two out of the four directions. So I think the battle for this town is going to progress pretty rapidly over the next couple days. Um, Nova Mihailov, because, you know, if if I had to guess, is is not going to last through March and probably is going to fall, um, you know, or, you know w within, you know, very recently, maybe within the first week of March. Uh, it's, it's not 
it's not a big town. It's not the defensive position that some of these other places like Avdivka are. Um, finally, we're going to move to the Robotny front. The Russians also uh, big bombardments here and, and a major attack trying to seize Robotny. Initial information um, was saying that the Russians had basically completely pushed the Ukrainians out of town. Um, not exactly sure if that's the case. The Ukrainians at least hold positions in the northern part of town. It seems like um, this is probably close to what the battlefield looks like right now, although I do also have this all grayed out because we're not exactly sure of what, where the Russian positions are. But uh, there was reports the other day of pretty heavy fighting going on near the schoolhouse, which is right right here essentially and today an attack took place along this roadway right here it seems like the russians were trying to you know advance up the road and and cut off the ukrainians from the rear of the town i don't know if that was successful or not but you know uh Robotny is 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 rapidly falling to to russian forces compared to you know how long it took for movements to to happen on this front over um over the course of the summer and the fall so um you know hard russian attacks uh, aggressive russian attacks all along the front uh and and that's probably going to 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 continue it seems to me that you know of the you know three medium-sized towns of course you know like towns like severne and in lashtochny and and um stepove they're they're just small little farming so settlements they're nothing right just a couple of houses um novom a little bit bigger you know maybe you can call it like a village or town or a town status if uh, there's people that you know consider village town settlement city to be, you know, of a certain size. I, I don't know about any of that, but, um, you know, the medium-sized towns, Ivanovska, um, Novomihailovka, Robotny, um, you know, out of the three of those, I'd say we're going to see probably two of them fall in pretty rapid succession, and probably all three come under Russian control sometime in March if things keep developing like they have been. Uh, and we could see, uh, you know, larger towns like uh, Krasnogorovka, you know, con come under significant assault, um, you know, sometime uh, shortly after that. I think, you know, and, and this might be a sign of some kind of symptoms. If I'm wrong, uh, and well, of course, if I'm wrong and, and none of those three towns I mentioned uh, end up falling in March, then it means the Ukrainian army is in a lot better shape than, than we think it is right now. Um, if I'm right about that and I'm wrong about Krasnogorovka and Krasnogorovka also uh, ends up falling within that time frame, then things are, gonna, things are definitely much worse. But I expect that with the size of Krasnogorovka and um, how built up it is, I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty dense little settlement. It's pretty defensible. I think the Russians are going to have... It's a little more complex, right? Like, they're going to have to... Um, you know, capture Novelsky, first of all, and and push to the north here and, and get into this territory and, try, you know, try to basically uh, put the town into a semi-encirclement, right? That way they can go in from from multiple directions. It doesn't seem like the kind of town like um, it's not going to work out like Nova Mihailovka, where once they get a foothold into the town, they, they could just start inching into it. You know, like they're going to have to get pretty close to it on all sides and basically pull it into a semi-encirclement. Unless, unless um, you know, Ukrainian troops are, are, are fairly weak in the area and just, just turn and run. Right. All right. Um, so that is, you know, a brief update. I didn't have the script from earlier, so a lot of the information was different. Um, so, you know, I apologize for that. I'll probably have um, an update for you guys tomorrow as well. So. Thanks for bearing with me and until next time.